Hey everyone. With Cinema 4D release 2023 now including OpenColor.io and After Effects Beta now implementing OpenColor.io, which hopefully soon will be included in the production version, I thought it'd be a good idea to go back and take another look at the workflow from Cinema 4D into After Effects utilizing ACES. I will say though, if you are brand new to this, uh, to color management or to ACES, uh, take a look in the description below. Uh, I have some links in there that go over some of the basics and give more of an overview from the beginning. This video kind of assumes you've already been working or trying things out with ACES. So let's jump into Cinema 40 and take a look. Okay, sorry, real quick, one more thing. I just wanted to say that I am by no means an expert at this. I am very much still learning. So at any point during this tutorial, if I say something or do something that is not correct, please correct me in the comments below. All right, let's go to Cinema. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4D 2023.0.1. I have just a basic scene set up here with a few cubes and if we go ahead and look at the render settings. So far, this should look very familiar. This is the globals tab of the Redshift renderer, and we're looking at a rendering color space of ACES CG. The display is sRGB, and the view transform is ACES 1.0 SDR video. All right, so this is Redshift taking on the role of implementation of OCIO. So right now, Cinema 4D, if we go over to the project tab, there's now a color management section in our project, and we have the option to keep it as basic, which is what we're used to. And now there's a new option for open color IO. So when I switch this over to open color IO, you can see here the color management tab of Redshift now is using the project settings for OCIO. And we set those here. So we're going to see some similar things here. We're using an ACES preset, so our rendering space is ACES CG, like it was in Redshift. The display space is sRGB. And the view space is the same. The view transform is ACES 1.0 SDR video. And you can see here, this is pointing to an OpenColorIO config file, which is in the Cinema 4D resources, modules, C4D plugins, OCIO, and there is the config.ocio file. So you can go in and change this if you want, but for right now, just gonna leave this default. So one thing, if we go back, I want you to keep your eye on these colors here. If I go back to basic, here, I'll hit render. And I'm gonna go back to open color IO with the Redshift render view enabled. So, big difference in the colors. I haven't changed any colors. All I've done is change the color management to open color IO. So you can see here, all of these got brighter and a little bit different uh, hues. So what's happening here, right? So before, when we were using basic, we are choosing colors with our color picker here. And I've just got the color selected in the diffuse channel of my red cube. And I'm selecting these values and this is sRGB. These are sRGB colors and Redshift is saying, okay, you're selecting these as sRGB. We're going to convert that to ACES CG. And that's been the case for a while, ever since Redshift updated the way it's open color IO worked. Uh, when we got the drop downs for um, selecting the kind of input color space, the colors are automatically switched over to ACES CG. But when Cinema 4D does it, we're saying, okay, we selected all these colors and now we're going to switch to open color IO. Now, these colors aren't assumed to have been selected in sRGB. We get a little notification here. This scene may require conversion to properly work with OCIO. So if we hit this button, convert to OCIO, we get an option here. Input color space, sRGB. That's for input color space low, so like low dynamic range. Input color space high for high dynamic range would be scene linear, Rec. 709 or sRGB. And the render space is ACES CG. So if we just leave that as default and hit OK, we'll see we're back to what we originally had in the Basics tab with Redshift handling the color management. So when we go from basic to open color IO, we have to let Cinema 4D know that 
our previously chosen colors were sRGB colors, and now we want them into ACES CG colors. And that's what this convert to OCIO button does. It will update the manually chosen colors to work as they were working when Redshift handled that conversion automatically. You may also have noticed that um, the colors for my layers here have been updated and also some updated colors in the uh, property values of our Redshift nodes. Um, hopefully that's fixed. I don't think that's, I mean, I understand um, we need to update the colors, but um, this is getting shifted along with all the other colors we manually select. Right, so benefits of using this, now that we have open color IO selected here, one of the nice things is that to render out a final image in EXR, we can just do save, open EXR, and just save this out. And I don't have to go in anymore and change the output to raw and uncheck compensate for view transform. That's all handled now in this save. We just want to make sure that the depth for our open EXR for saving this regular image is set to 32 bits per channel. Um, if you did want not as heavy of a file, leave this depth set to 32 bits per channel, but check use 16 bit float. A word of warning, if you select 16 bits here, this defaults back to a clamped EXR export. You can see here the image color space went from linear, 32-bit, linear color space. It's a linear transfer function or linear gamma. If we change it to 16-bit, it's now sRGB. So we would be baking in the transform. If you want to use 16-bit float, you need to take the depth up to 32 bits and check use 16-bit float, right? Okay. But now that's it. If I hit render, we'll take a look at this in the picture viewer. And I will just add this to the picture viewer as well. Now the same colors. So right now, what we have is a color space aware picture viewer. And you can see up here, view transform. Right now it's set to embedded and it's got color space ACES SDR video. Sometimes I found that embedded doesn't bring up these color spaces. Um, setting it to project will also do project, your project level settings of ACES 1.0 uh, SDR video. So it'd be the same sort of thing here. But the picture viewer now is color aware. So we don't see that sort of um, switch happen where before our render would render and then the view transform would be applied and it would automatically like switch. You'd see that change over. Um, now this is handled and we can view this as it's rendering the way it should be. So if we turn this off, here's our raw render in linear gamma or linear with a linear transfer function. So we've saved this out as a high dynamic range EXR, but we can view it with our ACES transform. And just to show you, if we were to go in and save this instead as a JPEG, same situation. Um, you could just change this to JPEG. Don't have to do anything else. Redshift is still being handled by the project settings. So hitting render here will render this out as an 8-bit JPEG. And I can open that up. Yeah, we can see here, JPEG matches our render view. So there's no real extra steps. Everything is just working as it should. So kudos to Maxon for including this color management workflow. I know people have been asking for this for a while, myself included. So I'm super happy about the way this has been implemented. Seems really straightforward. So I have another sample scene here that I've set up with some textures and some photos in the scene. And I just want to go over the workflow for getting proper colors in your textures and photos. So I've got this color checker chart here. And if we look at the texture node, we'll go back here. 
Um, this is an EXR file. So I've downloaded this. This is the color checker chart uh, as an EXR. So this is already in the color space of ACES CG. So we just have to tell, in this case, the Redshift node, but all of Cinema, I guess, what color space we're starting in. So I know this is ACES CG because that is what I was told it was in when I downloaded it. So we just need to tell Redshift and now Cinema 4D what color space this started in. So this is an ACES CG color checker. So we just need to select ACES CG as the color space. And this looks correct. The photo I have here, I've got this uh, photo and that is just a JPEG. And that is going to be an sRGB. This is the same thing we were doing in Redshift when Redshift introduced the open color IO rules. Um, and now Cinema is just interpreting these the same way. So there's no shift um, from the way Redshift was doing in the past to the way uh, the open color IO implementation in Cinema is handling things. So it's the same deal. And it's the same thing with other textures like, um, you know, roughness textures. We want to set that to raw, uh, transparency. Whoops, that is not transparency. Oh, right, I'm using a sprite note here. So this is, this actually should be raw. So I can change that. Uh, the alpha here, we just want black and white. So this is like a data map. So we just need to make sure that this is being read as true values. So it's the same workflow as before. So there's no change uh, if you're used to working with Redshift and setting the color spaces of all your input files. It's the same thing. So I'm just going to render this out as an EXR um, and then let's hop over into the After Effects beta and look at the way After Effects has implemented their OCIO. So as of now, um, After Effects, I have After Effects that's up to date and right now the production version of After Effects does not have a working open color IO workflow. Uh, there seems to be some confusion about this. Um, what has been implemented though. If we go over to the beta apps and After Effects beta, you want to grab that. If you don't already have it installed, you can try it out. Just grab it from the desktop apps and then just click install. And then you will get this After Effects beta. Okay, so After Effects beta is opened up. You can see here we've got this little flask icons so you can see what the changes are what they've added some interesting things coming out you can look through that so i just wanted to take a quick break here and say this next section is complicated it sucks there's just no way around it my hope is that if it's confusing to you you just stick with it and hopefully this will start to make more sense the more times you see this done so fair warning this does get a little tricky but good luck <laughs> But what we're interested in is the new color settings. So we're going to go to project settings under the file menu and then over to the color tab. And I think by default, this will go to the Adobe color managed color engine. But if we click this down, we have OCIO color managed. And once we select that, um, it should default to ACES 1.0.3. And it'll give you some options on bit depth and working color space and the display color space. Um, looking under this here, that looks like we have some other options. The ACES CG 0.2.0 beta and the ACES Studio beta. And also a custom open color IO config where we can load in our own uh, config.ocio file. I'll go over these a little bit later, but right now we're gonna, just going to stick to the first option here, ACES 1.0.3. And we're going to come down here, make sure our bit depth is 32 bits per channel. We'll need that if we're going to be compositing. And the working color space is ACES CG, compositing linear. Um, we can also come down here and select ACES CG, same thing. And for now, we'll just leave the working space ACES CG and the display color space ACES sRGB. We do have some other options if you are on a different monitor, so you can change the display space to whatever you're I guess, grading on or compositing with. Uh, if you had a Rec 2020 external monitor, you can do that, a P3 monitor. Uh, but my monitors are just a standard sRGB, so that's what I'm going to select. Okay. 
All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and import the EXR that I just rendered out. All right, so here's the gallery scene, EXR. And if we look up here, we've got uh, floating point and working space is ACES CG linear, which is correct. So let's just drag this into a new comp. And right away, you'll notice that this looks like our Redshift render view. And if you look right here, it's because we are using a view transform right inside After Effects' composition window. So if I turn this off, set to none, we're seeing the interpretation of the raw data, right? This is a raw EXR. And so now we have the option to display this correctly, even though the file is not being converted at all. So in order to start working with this, we'll need to come up to our effects and presets and start searching OCIO and just make this a little bit bigger. So it looks like we have two here. We have OCIO color space transform and an OCIO file transform. I'm going to grab the open color IO color space transform and just drop it right onto the EXR. And we get some options here. We have an input color space and an output color space. So our input color space is correct. It's ACES CG. That's where we started from Redshift. And our output color space, we want it to be sRGB. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off so we can see this change. And I'm going to select, I'm going to go all the way down here. And we're going to select output, output sRGB. And now we are back to what we originally had in our view transform. If we put that back on, you're going to see this gets two transforms applied. So now that we've taken this from ACES CG into sRGB, we no longer need to use this view transform. So we're just going to turn this back off. Uh, and you may be wondering why the naming looks a little bit weird. The other in, in Redshift, we have the output as ACES 1.0 SDR video. Um, and that is because we're using a old open color IO configuration. This is the ACES 1.0.3 version. And I believe now, currently, I think Cinema 4D and Redshift are both using ACES 1.3, not 0 0.03. And so there's been some updates to the naming conventions and most recently some updates into how we change from our input color space to our output color space. So I'll talk about that a little bit later, but for right now, this is the method, the only real method I could get to actually work inside of After Effects. This is still in beta, so there's going to be changes coming to this. So right now, this is the only way that I found that this actually gets the results the same as we had in the Redshift render view. So we just have to go back to using sort of these uh, antiquated naming conventions. So output sRGB would be like the display transform of sRGB. And now it's called something different, but it's doing the same thing. So now we are in the sRGB color space. But if we put something before this, like an exposure, and I drop the exposure down, so you see we still have the full dynamic range of the scene. I can you know, lower this. This is almost nine stops lower. And I can even go higher. And you can see that this still maintains detail here in the highlights. And we're not clipping. We're sort of rolling off the highlights. We're using that ACES tone mapping. And probably a better way to do this would be not to stack these up right on the EXR, but to make a new layer. And just put this file transform on another layer. And we'll just label this. It's a CG to sRGB. And really, if I was doing this correctly, I would also put the exposure adjustment on another layer just so I can keep track of what's going on. All right, so I can just turn that off. And we have our original render. And so that is pretty much it. Like Once we have the ability to utilize OCIO inside of After Effects, we don't have to do that sort of extra step of like gamma correcting because After Effects is now aware that we are transforming from ACES CG to output sRGB.
um, there used to be that extra step. If you've seen the other tutorials that I've done, where we have to make like this uh, color space converter node and select linearize output because there's two sRGB curves being applied, that's no longer the case because OCIO is now inside of After Effects, and After Effects understands what's what's happening. So another situation would be like, okay, now that we have this, can we put another? Let's try to add another photo into this render, um, just over top. So I'm just going to import another image. So here I'm just going to pop up in an external window the image that I'm bringing in. So this is just a JPEG, um, and it's just a regular old sRGB JPEG. So if we look here, this is now in our project, and the profile says ACES, ACES 2065. So we know that's not correct, right? So if we go to interpret footage main, it says override, it says media color space sRGB, override media color space default ACES 2065. I'm not sure how right now to set up the default media color space override. Um, if my working space is ACES CG, I would like to just make that the default or be able to select the default. That may be in the settings somewhere in the project settings. I haven't been able to find that, but right now we have a couple options, right? So override media color space is going to convert the colors in this image into 2065, ACES 2065, which is the much larger color space than ACES CG. So this is converting this from the media override space into the working color space of ACES CG. So let's see what happens if we just drag this on top. And let me just scale this way down. Let's just scale this and kind of put it in place. So that's not the same look as this. You can see the colors are much brighter. So this is being interpreted incorrectly, right? So what we need to do is go up and right click here and interpret footage main and override media color space. We have some options because it's assuming that everything is in the working color space. We could say, Hey, just make this ACES CG. And that means that because it's assuming that it's in the working space anyway, that it's not going to change anything. So, but that's a little bit confusing, right? Like it's not ACES CG and it has media color space here as sRGB. But the way I understand it is that open color IO deals with its own set of rules. And this sRGB media space is an ICC profile. That's, um, you know, like sRGB or Adobe RGB pro photo. These are color spaces that are dictated by the ICC color profile tag inside of the image file. That's why when you open up like a TIFF, for instance, in Photoshop, it can read that and it displays the colors properly. You don't have to manually select the color space every time you open up a file in Photoshop. But Open Color IO does things a little bit differently. So we're kind of on the hook for telling this this color system what these files are now this could change and this could be we may see open color io actually read these things and interpret this as like an image an srgb image file but right now we have to set it manually so it's kind of on us to manually select these things the same way when we bring images into redshift which are jpegs we have to say oh it's srgb or this is raw we just want this as data so it's kind of the same thing now inside of After Effects. So the question is, if we're going to select RGB, which one do we use? So you may be tempted to choose output RGB as the input. So now, let's go back and take a look at that again, what's going on. So this is being converted from the media color space into ACES CG. So now it's going from output sRGB to ACES CG. So if we go, we turn our ACES CG back on, this now is right. This is now wrong. So we need to turn this back off. 
and add an OCIO color space transform to our JPEG. And we need to go from ACES CG back to output sRGB, which is a lot, right? Because we're, <laughs> we're going, we're saying, hey, this is sRGB, but it's automatically converting it to ACES CG, our working space. All that's happening here inside of After Effects, right? So if we tell it to override and make this sRGB, in order to display it correctly, we have to say, okay, since you're taking this as sRGB and transforming it into ACES, we need to go back from ACES to sRGB to display it correctly. So an alternative is just setting this to the working space so there's no double conversion. right? So now there's no conversion being done, and now we can just delete this tag on this, and now we're back to the way it looks originally in our picture viewer, right? If we wanted, though, to make this seem like this was in our scene originally, we may want to pull this under and have the exposure handle everything at once. That way, we can adjust this and have this sort of live in our scene. But right now, this open color IO is changing this from ACES CG to sRGB. So we need to make sure that this image is in an ACES CG. So as you can see here, this no longer looks correct, right? This isn't the same anymore. So we have a couple options. We can do that with an OCIO transform here or change the way we're interpreting this from the beginning. So let's try this. Let's go to interpret footage, main. For color, we want to say that this is, we want to convert this to ACES CG, but we know it's coming from sRGB. So we just need to select, whoops, wrong one. So for an input profile, we would select utility sRGB texture. And now we're going from sRGB texture into the working space ACES CG. If we hit OK, this is now reacting correctly. So let's handle this a different way where instead of interpreting the JPEG from the project level, let's do it on the comp level right on the JPEG, right? So let's just to make sure, let's go back up into interpret footage main and think about this. So the override media color space is set to the working color space. And if we look right here, color values are assumed to be in the working color space. They're assuming it's ACES CG. Even though this says sRGB, it's paying no attention to that. OCIO doesn't care. And it's assuming we're bringing in all of our footage we're bringing in. We're just, they're just assuming that it's an ACES CG. And we're not telling it any different. So the color values in this file are assumed to be ACES CG. So no color values will be converted. Color values will not be converted, right? So that means that our image inside our comp is sRGB. Right now we're viewing it through a transform. If we turn this off and the exposure off, if we just look at this, that looks right. This is what we'd expect. Yeah, looks great. OK, so it's looking right. But we have this underneath our exposure layer, which we don't need on. But we also have it underneath our master OCIO conversion layer, our adjustment layer, where we're going from ACES CG, our working space, to the output sRGB. So now this is being converted. It's not what we want. So. If we use the color space transform here, we need to say, so we need to go, we know this is sRGB. So our input color space, we need to tell it to be sRGB, and we need to transform it to ACES CG. And that way, once this layer takes over, this goes from ACES CG to sRGB. I hope that makes sense. So what we need to do is say, what is this really? 
this is really an sRGB image. So we have some options here. We can use the utility sRGB texture, or we can come all the way down and select the output sRGB. So let's start with output sRGB. And now that looks correct again. If I turn this off, this layer looks crazy because this is an ACES CG. But that's what we want because this layer goes from ACES CG to sRGB. And now it's correct. And now when we apply our exposure, we can see it's being properly adjusted. But if we look closely, we notice that this looks a little bit weird, right? There's some bright highlights in this image that are kind of sticking around. It's almost like this is backlit, or this is being interpreted as a very bright scene with super bright highlights, not a poster on a wall. And that's because we're using, incorrectly, the output profile as the input profile. And unless you're doing some like crazy exposure adjustments, it's, it may not be that big of a deal. If we turn this off, it's probably hard to tell that these are super brights. It could just be, that's the way this is shot. That's fine. But you do notice it. Once we take the exposure way down, Like this seems it's like luminous. It's like it's emitting light. So to get around that, what we should do here, instead of output sRGB, we'd want to select utility sRGB texture. And now, with our exposure down, these values are just going to gray. They're not super bright highlights that are being interpreted as high dynamic range, right? Because this is just a poster. So technically, for this case, that would be correct. So this is a lot of converting back and forth. And if you're thinking, this sucks, this is totally confusing, I agree with you. And that's where deciding beforehand how we're setting up our After Effects scene can really benefit because really if we're not bringing in any external jpegs or tiffs or anything like that if we're not mixing different media then setting up the working color space makes a lot more sense and right now since we're using aces cg and if we're only bringing in i'm going to turn this off actually i'm just going to delete this from our comp and just bring in so here's that test exr uh rendered out beforehand and I'm just dropping it in here, and we can see this looks correct because this is ACES CG, and it's being interpreted as ACES CG. And here, we're going from ACES CG to sRGB. So there's nothing really we need to do. And so changing the color space isn't necessary because we're using all ACES CG files. So setting up your project space as ACES CG, if all your footage is ACES CG, makes sense. But if you have to mix different files and different file types like log footage and you know log footage from multiple cameras, like a Sony camera or an Arri camera, then my recommendation would be not to set up a working color space at all. Um, what I would do is change the working color space to none and utilize the open color IO nodes here. So basically what that means is there's no automatic conversion going on. And a lot of people have different ways of working. Some people prefer that automatic conversion and they would want it, if most of the footage is ACES CG, then I want it mostly to be interpreted correctly and I have to go in for the ones that aren't ACES CG and change those. So in this way, if we look at our Iceland photo, I can pull this back in and just put this on top. And I'm just going to scale this down again. So right now, this is on top, and this is looking correct. Because if we go look in here now, if we go to interpret footage, main, color, there's no selection here. Color management is off. So there's no conversion being done, right? So if we wanted to then do the same thing we did before and put it under our exposure, Right, we have this set to, we'll just take this way down, right? So we need to add our OCIO effect 
open color IO texture on Iceland. And we'll go from sRGB texture to ACES CG. And now it's pretty close. Now it's not perfect. This doesn't match perfectly because we're using this as a texture and this is still being, you can see the darks are a little bit darker and this just looks a little bit crunchier because it has that sort of ACES tone mapping applied. Um, but if we do utilize our exposure, that's when this is going to behave more like a poster rather than a high dynamic range image. And if you wanted to counteract that to match it, you probably just have to add some sort of a levels adjustment or curves adjustment onto this and do some manual adjustment to try to match this if you wanted this to match up perfectly correctly. If you weren't doing the exposure, of course, then you could do the hacky way of just selecting the output sRGB. And now you get a perfect match but it won't behave correctly with an exposure adjustment. So it really depends on how you want to work. Um, and so this sort of method of kind of leaving the color management up per layer is the exact same way I would work in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve has a similar setup where, all right, I can show you. So here I am in just a brand new project in DaVinci Resolve. And if I go to this little gear icon down here in the lower right, this brings up the project settings. And if I go down here to color management, we have some options here like color space and transform. So color science right now is set to DaVinci YRGB. There's a timeline color space and an output color space. But basically right now with this color science set to DaVinci YRGB, this isn't handling, this isn't doing any transforms for us automatically. So an option would be to use ACES CCT as the color science. And now we have similar things here where we're going to select a global input transform for our footage and an output transform right here in the settings. And then we'll process these colors in ACES CC. Um, and you know, you can select these different options. So if we, if all we were doing was using Airy Log C, if our entire, if we're doing a short film and we shot it all on one camera, and we know we wanted to go from Airy Log C to uh, Rec 709. Well, then, yeah, this makes sense. We could do this and process the nodes in ACES, and we're good to go. However, if we were going to have like some B roll or other footage, and we utilize this method, we'd have to go in and manually change it. We'd, in the timeline, we'd have to say, hey, override the color settings, and this is not an ARI, this is a Sony, or this is a, a Canon, or whatever it is. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, so this isn't unique to After Effects, the sort of like having to decide and having to label all the footage. It's just a reality of a color managed workflow. So hopefully that makes sense. And I know this has been like it, it's confusing. And I, my hope is that seeing these different options, um, hopefully just the repetition of it uh, helps to understand it. And that's basically what I've done. I've just tried to do this over and over again. And so hopefully this becomes clearer and clearer. But even for me that, uh, you know, as someone that's been into photography and doing this stuff for a while, this is still confusing. And I still have to stop and really think about this and like, all right, what am I starting in? What color space am I starting in? Where do I want to go? And in between there, how do I edit it? Right? So right now we're just going from ACES CG to sRGB here. But if I was doing heavy color grading, I wouldn't really want to do that. And hopefully this doesn't confuse you more, but what I would want to do is first go not to ACES CG to sRGB, but I would want to add a new layer. I'll call this CC for color correction. And I'll add a Lumetri color to this, and I'm going to rename this. I'm going to go ACES CG to ACES CCT. I'm going to duplicate that layer, and I'm going to call this ACES CCT to sRGB. So we just need to make some changes inside of our effect layer here. 
So I want to go from ACE to CG, not to output sRGB, but first to ACE to CCT, which is a log transfer function or gamma curve. And now we go from ACE to CCT to sRGB, our output space. So nothing has changed. This looks correct. But what I want to do is pull the color correction here up in between. So if I turn this off now, this is what Lumetri color is seeing. This CCT, this log version of our image. And that's what Lumetri color is expecting. And most color correction software is expecting not a linear gamma, but a log gamma. And that way, the color correction here, like the blacks adjustment, this will be much smoother than if we had used linear gamma. So these, the controls will behave much more naturally. You may have, if you've tried to use Lumetri on your ACES CG footage, you know these, this gets like pretty bad. Here, wait, I can, I can show you. So we'll just go really quickly back to our output. pull this below and turn it on you can see how quickly so I'm going to like negative 13 and this is already clipped you can see this is just black this is dead now so if I undo this See, this is a much different look. I can turn this back on so we can see our final result. So this is a much smoother slider. Um, and so the color controls and things are just going to act more naturally for Lumetri. So if you're going to do, um, like, wanting to do some intense grading, you would want to do it in a log color space using Lumetri. Um, the exposure here, I would say, is not going to work as good in log. The log, the ACES CCT isn't going to be as good for exposure adjustments as doing it in the linear fashion. So I would do the exposure here on our raw EXR and take this down. And then that way we can go to log and do our color correction and keep the exposure if we're doing massive exposure changes like this if i wanted this to be like more like this like this levels this is like m minus five stops i would do that before i go to aces cct um, we i think we lose a little bit of fidelity when we change into aces cct but the color controls are going to react much more naturally here um, so i would just reset this if i wanted to bring the shadows up a little bit can sort of have control over the curves and the color wheels, you know, whatever. Um, and so this isn't also, this would be a similar workflow in DaVinci. Um, we would take our, in our node layer, um, do pretty much the same thing with the nodes in the color section of DaVinci Resolve. So I just quickly changed that back to sRGB texture because I have this harsh exposure on there. Got some basic color correction. All right, so what I'm going to do just real quick, I'm just going to add another layer on top. Just gonna put down a final levels and just I'm just gonna kind of clip these whites just a little bit. I want these actually white. And I'm just gonna save this image out as a JPEG. And I don't have to do anything else. And we'll just call this final scene. So here we have the saved out version, and it looks just like it does in the composition window. 
After Effects, so everything is saving out correctly. All right, so I also wanted to talk about a different approach to this altogether. So what I'm going to do is just grab this EXR and pull it into a new comp and set the display back to ACES sRGB. And let's say I just go ahead and add an exposure to this. And I just drop down the exposure and we'll say this is my color correction. So I haven't actually applied any transforms to this. This is still just a regular EXR and I'm just viewing it through this ACES sRGB view transform. So if I turn this off, this is what this EXR would look like if I exported it. But let's say I want to export this right now. Another option is to come up to composition and just do save frame as file and we'll just save this as export. So now it's in our render queue and we can go up to the Photoshop and I just want to save this as a JPEG and Format options is fine. RGB, I don't need, there's no alpha or anything. But under color, we can say the output color space we want here. So if I say output sRGB and, and I hit OK and just hit render, So that works. However, there's no option to control the image after we do our transform from ACES CG into sRGB. So for instance, in this scene, um, I'll just drop the exposure again. And now here is where we're going from ACES CG to sRGB. I can drop in another layer and just do a levels and drop in a levels adjustment on this. And a lot of times when we're using ACES, because we're tone mapping our renders, our whites may not look pure white. And that's by design. We can see that like a white tone doesn't end up being a pure white tone after an ACES transform because the purest white is reserved for the most brightest of highlights. You know, we're going to put a sun in the image. So the sun is going to be like actually white and everything else is going to be some sort of toned down version of that. But that might not be what we want to end up with with a final image. So in this case, like maybe these images here, if I put on info, I wonder if I let's drop it down a little bit more. So for instance, here, you can see here I'm at like 0.9. So this isn't pure white, but this is a pretty bright specular highlight. So I may want that to be pure white in my final JPEG. So I may want to like come in and make this, like actually clip this. And I can adjust this to this is just over one. Do it a little bit more. So in this scene, this might be kind of subtle, but if I turn this off and on, you can see this it does a little bit. So these whites are a little bit brighter white, and this is now actually going to full white in this area, which is maybe what we'd expect. So doing it this way gives you final control after you've done the transform to sRGB. But we don't have that option if we just do it on export. You're just sort of left with whatever you get, and that may be fine. You may be fine to just export and do the transform at the very end, and that's it. But if you want that extra control, this is the better way to go. You have the transform here, and then you can do any final adjustments on top of that. And now if I was going to save this image, I would just do the same thing, except I wouldn't need to do anything in my color tab. So this just says the same. I don't have to touch it, don't have to worry about it. And then I'll just save this as export to. And there we go. And that works fine.
So I'm just going to delete this really quick and get rid of this exposure and talk about the other options for OCIO in the After Effects beta. So if you remember, we selected this, which is now outdated, ACES 1.0.3 uh, OCIO configuration, which is why we're left with these sort of antiquated um, transforms like output sRGB. So if we change this over to the ACES CG beta, We can say our working space is ACES CG or ACES CG here, same thing. And the display color space is sRGB display 1.0 SDR video, which is what we're now used to in Cinema 4D and Redshift. So this looks promising. However, once we do this, we do have to go in and update our OCIO color space transform effect. And you can see here that the error, this has been changed and this no longer exists. So we need to reset this. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go from ACES CG and what do we pick here? Because we are seeing this in display ACES 1.0 SDR video. But if we select none here, this now resets. So we need to do it here. But we're missing that display transform as an output. We have display sRGB, but watch what happens when I select this. This is not quite right. This looks blown out. And for now, I'm just going to get rid of this Iceland uh, photo here. Just we're looking at the render. So what's going on here? And what I found out is that in the upcoming versions of OCIO and ACES, what the push is going to be is to separate the transforms from color space and looks. And that's why in the OCIO plugin, which if you're used to using this ACES workflow in After Effects, you know, in the past we had to download that FNORD OCIO plugin. And quickly I'm going to open up the previous version and just show you what I mean. So now I've gone back into the production version of After Effects where Open Color AO is not implemented, so we have to use the plugin. And I've just dropped the OCIO plugin on a new adjustment layer, and I need to select my OCIO config, which I have saved in another uh, Color IO folder. So this is the same one that comes with Redshift. I've just copied it into my own folder so I can access it quicker. And you can see here, we've got options to convert, but also the display option. And this is what we would normally do, ACES CG to sRGB. It's our display transform. And the view transform is ACES 1.0 SDR video. And this is um, Saul's, uh, Saul Espinoza, his updated OCIO config that has different looks in here. So he's done this sort of low contrast look. And of course, in this version, After Effects doesn't know what we're doing. So quickly, I'm just going to go and add this gamma fix. And that's just the color profile converter because we need to remove the double gamma curve. And we just need to pick linearize output profile. And now we're back to what we had in Redshift. So if we just go to convert, we're doing the same thing. ACES CG to sRGB. And that's the same thing we have here in this beta. ACES CG, output color space, display RGB. But this is untone mapped. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. But with a display option, we can do both. And what is missing in the beta for the version 0 0.2, let's double check that real quick, ACES CG 0 0.2.0 beta. We're missing that display transform, which is available here. If I get rid of this, it looks right. But we don't have the option to pull that same transform for our output color space. What's missing here is either another node called OCIO display or the option to select the display or view transform or look in this effect here. I think After Effects is aware of this. Um, I've checked the ACES central forum and it seems like this is something that's still in the works because of this. Um, 
this is still in beta. But right now we're missing these transforms to get this all the way back to where we had it in Redshift. Um, and that's the same as selecting the ACES Studio beta. We can do the same thing, ACES CG. We have the same option here, the display color space, we select OK, and then reset this again. We still are left with these displays just like this none so we can see. So our display here, if we select this and turn this on, this is still blown out. So it's not tone mapping this. It's just changing the color space from ASUS CG to sRGB. So you see the colors kind of look right, but we the highlights are all blown out. This is not being remapped down to a luminance value that the sRGB space can handle. So for now, we can still utilize the After Effects beta, but we need to go back to the old method of ACES 1.0.3. And I'll just reset this. I don't think I need to, but just to be consistent. And I'll reset the OCIO effect and change this to output sRGB. We just need to remember to turn this off if we're doing the transform here. And now we are back to where we were. Now, I'm recording this on November 1st, and this is now the most up-to-date After Effects beta version, and I do have the most up-to-date uh, After Effects production version, but all of this could change uh, very quickly. So once we have those updated view transforms for the newer OCIO configs, this may not be an issue. And hopefully we'll see just the ACES 1.0 SDR video being an option in a display look, along with other options. Um, there's some exciting things being done um, in the ACES community and some really great options for looks are coming up. If you're interested in that, I will talk about that quickly now. All right, so here we are back in cinema, and real quick, I just want to say that this isn't really important information. You don't have to know this. I just wanted to point out uh, some of the ongoing criticisms of working in ACES and ways in which the future of new implementations of ACES are working to deal with these criticisms. So right now, in this scene, I've got six planes with textures applied to each one. So if you see here, I've got a raw blue texture and an sRGB blue, a raw red, an sRGB red, raw green, and an sRGB green. All right, so what, what am I doing here? Take a look here at this raw blue color. Right in the diffuse color, I've gone ahead and selected the raw tab here and typed in a value of one for blue zero for red and green, right? So I'm getting a pure blue. If I head over to S the sRGB tab, you see the numbers don't change. They're the same here. So I'm hoping that Maxon does update this because I think it'd be really interesting to see what these values actually are. If you watch here, if I go to sRGB and I just overwrite this, I'm going to just press one again and then click off of it and then go back to the raw tab, you can see all of these values have been updated because now I've selected these values in sRGB they are different raw values. So I would love to see values over one or less than zero in the sRGB tab to really know what I've chosen. So right now they're just clamped here as the, the visuals are just clamped. Um, so I think it'd be interesting to see like what, what actually happens here, like what raw value of blue really translates to sRGB. And real quick, I just want to kind of point out what's going on here. I'm sure you've seen this in some form. So this is just sort of the overall colors here, this black outline here. This is called the spectrum locus. This represents the color spectrum that is visible by the human eye. And it's just sort of laid out in this graph form. You've probably also seen it as like a long rectangle uh, with wavelengths applied. But this is just charted in a different way on this diagram. And overlaid on top of that, you have the these triangles that represent different color spaces. So this purple here represents the sRGB and Rec. 709 color primaries. Each point here represents the green, red, and blue value within that color space. So those are our three primaries plotted here. 
And we can look up here at ACES CG or the AP1, and that's the red triangle. And you can see here that the green value falls outside of the spectrum locus. The red value and blue value do as well, although much more subtly. So if we have a value here, if we choose our most bluest blue in Rec 709 and sRGB, the value is actually different than if we had chosen it in ACES CG, right? The bluest blue lies here on the graph. Same thing with green, way different. The value green is way up here. And the difference between the red is here. So these values are gonna be much different. So what I would like to see, I think it'd be interesting, it may be confusing and I could see the argument um, against it as well, that when we choose colors in raw, we would actually see these values updated in the sRGB tab. So we would know that these aren't true values. This isn't going to look the same. So what I've done here is set up an area light just pointing right at these six planes. And I've animated the exposure from minus 10 to positive seven. And you can see here, I'm just overexposing these planes. But as I drag this up, these values here have been chosen in raw or ACES CG. These values have been chosen using sRGB values. You can see the difference. It matters where we're choosing our colors. And as this gets brighter, you're gonna see how these colors change as they get overexposed. And right around here is a pretty good example of how this blue has shifted to purple. The red has shifted to yellow orange and the green has shifted as well. And this is described as hue skew. And people have been sort of complaining about this for a while. Some people think it's not a big deal that like, yeah, if you overexpose something, you should expect to see this happen. And it's not really a big deal. Other people think it's a really big deal and they would like to see this more of a light blue color rather than shifting to purple or magenta. But we can see here at some point, these all kind of get washed out to a lighter shade. And in general, that's been thought of as a very pleasing effect. Because when we think of the way film handles over brights, we see a similar effect. And that's sort of like maybe what we're used to seeing, um, but that may change, who knows? So I think like right now this is still pretty subjective. And I wanted to show this as just an example of how where we choose our colors down here does matter. So what I've done here is just exported this out in, in EXR just a raw EXR export of this um, transition from minus 10 exposure all the way up to positive seven. So I've got this exported out. So let's quickly just hop into DaVinci Resolve where I'm going to explain this further. All right, so I've got a new project open up in DaVinci Resolve and I've just grabbed that EXR sequence that I've rendered out, this raw EXR sequence out of Cinema 4D. I'm just gonna drag that into my timeline here. So here's what we're seeing. And I wanna go over to the settings and I just wanna make sure here that I've got the color science set to DaVinci YRGB. So it's not gonna do anything to this footage. We're just going to take care of that on our own. I'm gonna go over to the color tab. And what I wanna do is go up here and search for ACES transform. And I'm gonna drop that as a node after my raw input here. And I'm gonna choose this ACES version 1.3, which is the latest version that DaVinci Resolve comes with. And I'm gonna set the input transform to ACES CG and the output transform to sRGB. And right now you can see here, gamut compress is set to none. And as we go further here, this looks like it did in our Redshift render view. So we're sort of back to what we were seeing in Redshift. But I want to point this out here, gamut compression. If we look at this, we have two options, ACES reference gamut compress and parametric gamut compress. It's the same thing, except parametric just means I have these options here where I can parametrically adjust the gamut compression. So if we take a look here, we can see 
we can kind of see this behaving much differently. And this is sort of the, the criticism before um, when we look at these colors shifting. If I pull up, uh, this is Chris Brejan or Brehan, uh, his CG cinematography website, which has a ton of information on ACES. I have a link to this in the description, so definitely check this out. This has been super helpful. Um, it can be very technical at times, but I think on reading and rereading this, very helpful. So I want to kind of come down here um, where he has sort of described the hue skew. We can see that here, hue skews and posterization. So right now we have this image here showing an ACES CG red primary displayed with sRGB output transform. And this is the sRGB red primary displayed with an sRGB output transform. So we're seeing the same thing here, right? So this red kind of gets a little pinky here as it's overexposed and the sRGB primary being overexposed turns to this orange. The blue as a raw or ACES CG selection kind of gets a little purple here, but the sRGB primary gets very, very purple, right? So this has been a, an ongoing problem, and he has multiple examples here kind of showing the same thing. And there's been arguments to maybe use a different system. There's been talk of not using ACES at all, using another color system inside of OpenColorIO, and that is completely valid. Um, but I just wanted to point out that the gamut compression option now that they've implemented in ACES 1.3 can deal with this. You, you can sort of start to see how this is going to be potentially different now with these options. This wasn't an option before, uh, gamma compression. We were just going from one to the other without this sort of finessing of the gamut, the colors inside the gamut. So this is sort of, um, to me, it seeming like a, to me, it seems like a pretty elegant way of dealing with this, especially the way Da Vinci has sort of broken this out as a parametric option. So we can, I can sort of slide these around and sort of tailor the way these colors are being remapped as they're getting overexposed. Adjusting this here, and if I wanted to tweak these, I could. So I can get kind of a custom look here. You can see this is now going much more cyan in my ACES CG, but you can see here, this is now staying much more blue. The sRGB colors are staying much more blue than they were before. So if I turn this off, big difference, right? And the reason I'm in uh, DaVinci Resolve showing this is because the ACES here has been, they've had this implemented for a long time, and the ACES 1.3 is where I believe the gamut compression came into play uh, in this update. And right now, uh, as you've seen, After Effects uh, is still in beta, so they're still working on this. So hopefully we'll see similar tools being included. Um, I did want to mention very quickly that the gamma compression is only one aspect of this. The uh, new version 2.0 of ACES uh, introduces different looks and different ways of dealing with color gamuts. And right now, this is still way over my head. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to be implemented, but I uh, just wanted to point out that there are some new options being worked on. I wanted to point out really quickly here, if we look at the scopes, just kind of interesting. Um, so right now I have the gamut compression off, and it's kind of nice to see this happen here. When we pull the slider over where we're increasing the exposure, you can watch these colors sort of swirl into the center white point here. And they get closer to white. And you see this is sort of like a swirling motion. So we can see where blue, starting here, travels towards red and then to white, which is exactly what we're seeing here. This blue, as it's being overexposed, travels along this curve towards red and then to white. So the colors are kind of moving in this, in a way where they're shifting their hue. But with gamut compression on, I'll just turn it on to default, as we slide this, you can see how they stay much straighter. Like the colors are sort of starting going straight to white. So we're seeing that like the twisting that was happening before. There's still a little bit there, but it's much less.
So I thought that was kind of interesting to see like the difference here and like what's happening as the way colors are becoming overexposed, the way the colors are handled, where initially we hit that twisting motion towards white. And now they managed to get pretty much all the way to white. So this isn't super important to know or understand. Uh, just know that in the future, we're probably going to see more options for dealing with situations like this and more fine tunable ways of handling what happens to our colors. So I know that was a lot. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll be monitoring the comments here for the next couple weeks pretty closely. So if you do have questions, definitely post them there and I'll do my best to answer them. If you are interested, I will be streaming on Twitch, uh, hopefully more often, and I'll be doing some live question and answer sessions. So keep an eye out for those and hopefully all this will get easier the more you do it. Uh, thanks again. Bye everybody.